Well, we're uh, having fun again drilling out tack welds, getting the rest of this trunk floor removed, just kind of tidying up edges, things like that. We've got most of this side over here already drilled out. Looks like a few of these are already broken for me, I hope. Yeah, hate it when they double tap them right next to each other. Some of them are spaced too far apart and other ones are on top of each other. Sounds like more snow shedding off the roof. It's been snowing all day and now it's raining again. Up there, but then I'm gonna have to looks like replace this lip. It's pretty rusted along here. A lot of it's still pretty good shape. side by sider funny drilling spot welds out earlier this year or last winter one side of the car pretty nicely spaced and the other side of the car either another person totally or they just got off their coffee break because they were I mean, they were just, <laughs> there there's five times more of them in the same spot. Thank you. 
boy, this jigs is, uh, I'm already uh, experiencing the, the pluses of having this jig. It may have taken me a while to make it, but uh, it's going to be well worth it. Boy, I haven't everything held still for you while you're working on it and not having to chase it across the shop floor and having it relatively level and true is uh, definitely going to be nice in the long run. So it was worth the bunch of hours it took to build it. Definitely worth the money. Or money, well, time. Time is money though, I guess. You can't really see them. I'm just about done with the spot work welding, removing tasks. There's not many more spot welds left on this car. <laughs> I virtually completely torn the car apart by its spot welds. There's not much left. There's another one. Yeah, I really stack them up in this spot. Uh, these pointed uh, spot weld drills are pretty good. I got both types. I got the type of the little, the little hole saw too. They're more aggressive, but they uh, work well also. These are a little less aggressive and uh, don't tend to cut into the other material so easily. Anytime, anywhere. 1-800-SHOP. 
I'll end up removing the rest of this up to the up to the seam, uh, but for right now it's kind of holding things together. Uh, I salvaged the floor out of the 1960, which was still pretty pretty good, and I know it's different than the earlier uh, TR3s. This one has a flat trunk floor. And the later ones had an elevated trunk floor over the spare to give the spare tire well a little more room. And man, it needs all the room it can get. So I know it won't be original to a 55, but this piece is different on the later ones. So I gotta make a new piece for here and then seam weld the two together down there. And, uh, they do make a floor, I think Moss sells one, that is a raised early floor, but Christ, it's 400 some dollars. Then you gotta get it here. Like $600 probably in $550, $600 in a floor piece. So I got enough here to work with, and uh, yeah, I gotta save money everywhere I can. And this just requires a little time. But I'll end up with a raised floor, which uh, should aid in putting the spare in, because man, there is just virtually no room for the spare tire, and especially the wire wheel. It has the hub sticking up, and it has, it takes up even more room. So, take you off the stand here. I, uh, come on, focus. Damn thing. Anyway, um, you can see how loose this, the seams are. Uh, I'm going to have to tighten up. This side's worse. This is the side of the car that was pretty much broke loose from the frame. So it was wobbling a lot. This side's tighter, but still a little, little loose. And I scraped out what was left of the seam sealer, and so now I'll get things cleaned up and uh, plenty of repair on this little piece. I welded together a mount down here, the two by to clamp the tunnel to, and that made everything a lot stabler. Um, I've been checking any flat area that I could find like right there and right over here with a with a square small square and things are coming out I've, I've guessed pretty good because things seem to be pretty square in those areas um, but anyway um, just a little bit of an update and uh, man this uh, this uh, Framework is uh, really already amazingly helpful. So it's going to be a probably all winter working on this piece anyway.
More later. Well, I chopped this piece out here. This one already fell out, it was gone. And we'll get the carbon. I want to try to leave these edges so I have a reference. Either they're real rotten, I'm going to have to replace them, but still I need them as a reference. I need to get this piece out of the way. I've got this all clamped down here so it's sturdy now. And, uh, yeah, man, being able just to flip this thing on its side to work on it <laughs> and have it sit where I need it to is very handy.
Okay. Well, I left the lip intact, even though it's real rotten. I just need to know. I'm, it needs to be a reference point for me, so I kind of wanted to salvage as much as I could, just so I know where things are supposed to be. So much of this car doesn't exist, so I don't have a reference point. So I want to take advantage of whatever reference points I can get. <laughs> All right, well, more a little bit later. Yep. Do a little more cutting. This seems here is all lead welded or lead sealed.
And there's still a lot of rust in there. Yeah, I should just get the torch and heat the lead up, I guess. Well, the first piece I'm going to replace is this this piece here, and then probably this lower lower part of this uh, B pillar. Looks like there's a little bit of sheet metal wrapped around there. 
I know this is a leaded seam and I'm going to uh, re-lead it because I like the way it was done. But I don't know how far this sheet metal goes. It probably just goes to this edge. Then of course, outer rocker, inner rocker. And uh, yeah, that rust goes right up inside of here. I'm going to have to see if I can dig it out. Rust has penetrated every orifice. You know, this, this piece here I'll put on last after I put the new lower, after the body goes on because I don't know exactly where all this is going to go and I got to weld this this B pil pillar to the inner rocker and I can't do it with this piece on. So this one will have to stay off till towards the end. So the three pieces of body come together. More later. All right, no more cutting now on the other side. Pretty thin. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then I gotta go back up probably a little bit further. Now I notice on this car, of course, these being all hand built, there's a gap between the outer panel here and the inner fender well. They didn't have it all pinched right up together. And it kind of looks like it's that well all the way around where the later car that I'm using for parts, the old race car, it was pinched all the way together. So and I'm using parts of that car in here. So, figure out, looks like I can go ahead and probably cut this piece off because this is all gone. So, do that. Not much left of this lower B pillar, but uh, right up about here on up, it looks real good, so. May have to cut up this a little bit further. But I need to weld a, I'm gonna weld a piece of strap steel right here that'll be right up against the bottom of this B pillar. This is still the, the bottom, not much left. But, uh, um, right. Yeah, you can't, you can't really, that right here. I'll trace a mark around the piece I'll weld on here and that'll give me the location and the then how high so I'll, I'll use that for my gauge yeah this framework is uh, coming in handy in more than one way now I'm gonna go ahead and zip this off more later